so so it's nice to be back and it's nice to see uh, friends from all over the world around here. Uh, Olu, thank you so much for organizing this. It's really a lovely, lovely conference. Okay, so we get started. Yes. yes. Um, with Anwar's email, actually. <laughs> but basically, just to, to make the, the long story short, Olu got us, uh, sent us an email saying that um, <coughs> if we could talk about the axis for a type foundry. So basically, what we collected is um, a series of ideas and, and, and thoughts about some of the things that we think are important for ourselves. And we will use these, of course, as an excuse to show you a lot of typography. Okay? So, let's get started. So yeah, of course, one big part of us uh, in particular is collaboration. And um, that happened, we kind of uh, both went to Reading University, the Department of Typography and Design, Back in two, sorry, okay. back in two thousand two, two thousand three, we actually didn't go to the same year, but we met <coughs> in this very beautiful place. <laughs> and it still looks like that. Yeah, it did not really change. But they keep on promising that they will have a new Yeah, they keep on promising. But anyway, it's, it's a really fantastic hub of a lot of knowledge, a lot of expertise, and you learn from great people um, here, still black hair back then, Jose, younger, a bit more hair, and our, <laughs> and our teacher, Gerard Unger, who unfortunately died last year, who was very instrumental uh, in our kind of um, development. And back in 2006, we... Uh, created Type Together very remotely. Um, I was back then in the US, uh, Jose was in Argentina. No, I was in England. Um, and we did not see each other basically for two years. Yes, but the main thing about that is that at that point, type design in collaboration wasn't really that common. Um, so we need to see if this was, was going to actually work. And that takes us to the first project that we actually designed together. Um, it is based on, um, on a research that I did for, for my reading course. It's basically how to test um, the outcome of what you're designing. This is the same letter N printed in different ways. So basically we have this idea of what a typeface is. And when we draw it on the computer, we think that that is a, a typeface. But there is a type, there is digital data. When you put ink on a plate and print it, you get different results. Can you see the next one? Yeah. So they can be as different as, as, as these two. So our first project was to design a typeface that was meant for this kind of printing. Very kind of crappy paper, very rough printing conditions. And um, it really started from from the beginning as a very collaborative design process. So um, kind of Jose coming up or designing something, sending it back to me. Um, so we have this very iterative way of, of designing together, literally together, and we still do so after uh, 11... A lot of years. It doesn't matter. Many years. They don't want to know. But, but basically, I, I send Vic a sketch, then she will say, okay, this ball is not looking good, so we we'll put a corner there, we change the terminal, and then say, okay, this looks great, but the terminal went a bit too far. So we change it back and try to, to move it uh, in an area where we both feel comfortable with. Yeah, so, so it's kind of bouncing backwards and forwards. Um, and we ended up uh, with a four-style family, which has a lot of corners, kind of, this is back in 2006, so it has um, kind of to, to respond to these bad printing conditions. There's a very robust um, texture, uh, a very low contrast, and these, these corners you might point out. Um, Basically, <laughs> you see that this is not a bracket. Yeah. There is a corner there. And the same happens with these uh, ink traps here, these cuts. They, are, they become a, a, a part of the design, really. If I have a letter A, yes, these kind of things. It's opening up on purpose, because when you put ink on that and you print it very fast on a web press, it will fill in. 
Exactly. You see, so the smaller, because it's also for a really quite small, small print, you see that actually it creates um, this roundness. And um, then kind of a couple of years later, well, no, a bit, a bit later, um, no, doesn't matter. It doesn't matter, I think it was. Yeah, we'll make this little kind of video about, let's say, our collaboration, the way um, we, we work. Because, like Jose was saying, Sorry, sorry. Because like, he was saying that um, uh, back then it was rather unusual for people to collaborate on such a long distance. And in a way, uh, without the internet, uh, Type Together would not exist. And even without, you know, open type in a way, new technology has really um, allowed us to create, to go into different markets. Like for us, it was very important in the Eastern part uh, of the world, I mean, European part, sorry. So, <clears throat> um, at the beginning, it was really us two. We're dealing with basically all aspects of the foundry, running a foundry. And only... Which is time, much more than, than actually drawing. The yes. Yeah. There is a lot involved in this. And with time, we needed help, we got help um, in these kind of areas. And really the way we work is, is built a lot on trust, on mutual respect, and which is important, I think. And also in a way, um, kind of a design sensitivity that, that we both have, we share. Right, and it is important to point out here that all of these guys that you would start seeing here, we don't share an office. We basically... Each one of us is sitting in a different country, a different place, in a different continent even. Um, we just um, um, rely on um, different uh, communication tools uh, and collaboration tools to just work together. Yes, yeah, so, so kind of the, the, one of the main advantages of this fruitful collaboration is really that it results in this creative synergy. Yeah? That uh, where the result in a way becomes more than the individual part. So just to show you our global, globalness, okay? um, we are a global but very small company still. Uh, with our core team here all a bit tired or... Yeah. This is something that wasn't going right, yeah. right? There was something going wrong with this meeting. So we, we meet, we meet uh, every other week and also once a year we um, get the whole team together. Uh, like we did in, um, just a month ago or so. But we also have an extended family. And some uh, of these folks you will see uh, here. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. There's Pilar, yeah. Ferran. Pilar, Ferran, Sahar is here. Yeah. Yeah. So we, we uh, don't just publish uh, work, our work, but by, by other designers as well. Like this one is from um, Luisa, Lisbeth. Bit of a crazy kind of display. We have one Hebrew typeface by Abby Stern and Sanserata, which was kind of um, the source versions of Alvarata of Herat's um, Alvarata, uh, actually a PhD project. And then we have Belly, um, we get to talk about that a little bit later. Yeah, this is just a few of the ones that we pick for you. Uh, this is Soleil by, by Wolf and Ramona, really nice font. And um, Trevor. Trevor by Tio, Marco, and Iskra by Tom, Tom Grace. And uh, this is uh, Moto by Xavier Dupré. So, this collaborative aspect to, to type design. Basically, over the years, we started to refine it because there was there were more people working on it. And different parts of the processes were being done by different people, even uh, drawing uh, actual outlines, not just uh, engineering stuff. So we got to work on this typeface. This is based on this idea of recovering uh, something that happened in the late 50s, early 60s with some... Um, a style that probably is better known by the impact form that came with Windows later on, but there are many samples like that, and actually the, the, the impact that was uh, 
it was released at the, at the time was really good. It was yeah, it the, had different weights and everything. The, the original was from Steven C. Black Foundry in '65, and we saw um, this this kind of it was a specimen really um, merchandised, and there was something that really attracted um, attracted us. These very kind of tight curves. Um, this this basically the, the way that 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 it says here that. For titles, you need to set them really, really tight, right? In that way that impact has, there was something that was missing from in our library. Yeah, we, so. we felt that. So, um, in a way, we get inspired quite often by, let's say, historical sources, but we don't do revivals. Um, I can't do revivals. And m most of the time, there's, I think, no point to it. So we kind of take perhaps this inspiration, but turn it into after months and months of looking at stuff and kind of churning it in your head, you know, putting it away again, and then come up um, with a solution on your own. So the process is similar to last time. We started thinking, because when you have to set something very tight, the main problem you have is with triangular letters, the VWY. And that is because you have a lot of air down here. So that screws up basically the, the tight setting. So we started trying to make this base a bit wider just to counter the counter. Counter the counter, basically. Um, but it was too much, so we made it smaller. And then what we decided to do is just to chop off the little corners in the, in the triangle. So so we could actually move the things closer together. Yeah, here you can see it a bit more. It gets more noticeable in the, in the bold ways, mm -hmm. where it becomes a design feature. I mean, basically, this is a response to a specific need, but it, it becomes part of the nature of the DNA of the design. Together with these very flat, straight curves. And again, also to be able to set um, titles very, very close. <clears throat> And um, at the time, so when we started this, uh, four years ago, should we have? <laughs> yes. Um, there, there was um, this, it, it seems like there was more and more information design infographics happening in the editorial world. And we, we thought that this might, um, that, that kind of expansion of the Quotico as we started, the headline, could serve really well yeah, in, um, in the infographics. So we created uh, these other three whiffs. Very, quite uh, subtle differences in whiffs. But, um, but it, it is important to have these three options when you have to set read a lot of information, a lot of uh, data intensive pages, then you can reduce the width just a bit. And, and that might make the difference for you. And we also did an italic, and I mean, it's, it's quite a simple italic and that it's basically slanted, but we both don't like just slanted italic, so um, at least some of the letters turned um, to be a bit, to have a different, more italic sized shape. <clears throat> okay, let's awesome. go forward now. And uh, yes, this is the whole family. So you see the display range of weights is different from the text ones because they serve different purposes. You don't need a, a, a head like here. And then we decided to add some uh, icons for the infographics. Yeah, quite a set of icons. Um, and that was designed by another designer, Luciana Sotini, uh, back in Argentina. Um, so you get these kind of applications. I mean, that was the intention that we had for this typeface. And we also worked uh, with a, uh, a programmer to create um, a mini site together with a um, variable font. Um, I hope you guys know what a variable font is. I'm not going to go into details, but basically it's, it's something like this that you can create. You have just one file and you have um, a variety a smooth um, variety of instances within within that um, design space. So this was a little bit of a tricky whole um, tricky process for us to work with this particular 
person and also with the heavy data sets these are this is actually real uh, real time data that's being fed into the website right but back to the collaboration issue that's what we're trying to point out here the important thing is that collaborating with people in in different um, in different fields helps you understand how you might um, work better on certain typhus, right? Yeah, and here the, the icons, there are kind of two different sets, or so again, depending on the, um, the applications or the, the size of the type used, you need um, a different version to display it properly. Well, this is uh, how the thing ended up looking like. Um, this is um, Protipo together with another typhus that is called uh, Portala. Um, um, that um, they are not built, I mean, they were built together, but no. they kind of mind, uh, match each other very nicely. Yeah, well, because Portala was, was um, kind of developed earlier, but uh, again, for very digital uh, applications. Yeah. Okay, let's move on. Diversity is another big uh, principle we have. Um, starting with our team, that's our core team, which um, could be, I'm sure, more diverse, but um, it's, I think, pretty good for... So we, we kind of embrace, you know, cultural diversity. Um, it's important to us as, as a, almost a tool of learning. <laughs> that, that was enough for me. Um, <clears throat> um, and um, so, part of this diversity, we don't on, we don't only uh, embrace it in terms of collaborating with people from different. Uh, ethnic backgrounds or, or, or regions, or cultural backgrounds. But uh, it, as Vic pointed out, it was a big part of our, uh, of our design process at the beginning, trying to um, design accents in a way that were uh, culturally correct. Yes, that really has been a big, big part of us. So I think this diversity axis that we try to follow take us to try to understand how language and typography works in different regions and different uh, different cultures um, and this uh, take us to talk about these two uh, girls uh, Adele and Adele Sanz um, these are two typefaces that for us they were very very successful um, we designed the first one back in 2009 and the second one in 2012. Um, they were used in branding, uh, signage, uh, editorial design, you name it, everything really. And um, when we started getting ready to... Um, I mean, we, when we thought that we were done with accents, we said, okay, let's try moving the, the boundary outside the, the Latin area. And um, so we focused on a few scripts that we wanted to to uh, to Can support. Yeah, it's it's so we are we are staying within our editorial focus still. Yeah, and other songs that has been pretty much meant for um, user interfaces for digital applications and works pretty well in there. Um, so we continued with that idea and expanded um, to, to Arabic. Uh, well, Aza, she's here some, somewhere. Aza is here. Um, she designed this, that. yes. Um, um, and we, because Adele, Sons and Adele, they have quite a broad range of styles, so we kind of kept that range in the other scripts as well, even if um, it's perhaps not as common yet. Um. Right, uh, Southeast Asia is, is a whole ball game in itself, uh, but basically you need a few glyphs 
like double accents or the horn or a specific kind of critic marks. This is still Latin, but it's an extension of Latin that is necessary for Vietnamese, uh, which I think is one of the major languages that uh, is lacking a lot of support right now. It's, it's tricky with the double accents. And uh, we collaborated with Anutin uh, from Katzendema for time, which is, uh, is interesting in that for a Latin eye, it looks really dense. And I was trying to tell Anutin, really, did we, does it, can we open it up? And he was like, but this is really wide already. This is spaced out massively. Yeah. So, so it's interesting. I mean, you, you get to learn a lot from, from um, people that you work with as well about um, various sensibilities of a script. Um, they also designed uh, Lao, uh, which we haven't published yet, but um, it's coming. And then, of course, we have the, let's say, the other Europe. Um, so Cyrillic and Greek are easy, let's say, in comparison um, to, to a lot a lot of the other more complex ones, and uh, even in, we have, yeah, Irini Vlachou, who is uh, doing the, the Greek for us. Um, I did um, the, the Cyrillic, but with um, a constant kind of um, um, consultancies by, by Vega and Alexandra. And we did an Armenian, uh, which was super fun. I really liked doing that one. It was uh, with um, Khan. And Georgian. Yeah, I need to tell the story about this one because this is really fun. We had to do Georgian and Armenian, so we had to split it, right? So I discovered very quickly that Georgian didn't have as many glyphs as Armenian. So I said, I did Georgian, you know? But then later on, I found out that it's really, really hard to draw it. So the yeah, was <laughs> And uh, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, that's the really key. Uh, actually, we've been redesigning the Cyrillic. Um, and Indian, that's uh, the Devanagari was yeah. quite a process. <laughs> this, uh, we went back to Reading actually back yeah. in 2013, was mm -hmm. it? Yeah. Uh, to become students again, just to learn how to draw the basics. And we did so. Yes, we did so. But, but then it kind finishing of... it is a whole ball game. So, um, so yeah. we couldn't do it ourselves. And in the end, uh, I think it was Eric Marlofin and uh... Vaipav Singh and and Puja Sasina, mm -hmm. who is on the core team now with us, who was was great and rich, really um, completing completing and doing that. All of these, really, I mean, the goal here is that they are a part of adult sons and they have they have the same intention the same purpose but they are culturally correcting themselves so that they follow the what you would expect if you were um a native uh hindi speaker let's say and we started collaborating with uh, founder type um i wouldn't dare designing a chinese um well just for the time and, and also the, the complexities. But um, we made some changes, small changes, in the size of, or the alignment of things so they can work together with adult sons. And this is a product that we are going to be releasing really, really soon. Actually, it's released it's already released in, in China, China yeah. but uh, this is going to be available. Uh, when you look at it all together, uh, I think it's something that we feel very proud of. Yeah. Probably another axis that we need to mention. Um, things are important. It's that every font that we deliver, we make sure that it has the same standard of quality. So customers, they know what they get before they buy it. Uh, this might seem silly, but it's actually quite important. Um, so looking at the whole catalog, you will see things that look quite different, but um, all of them have a similar uh, language support and a similar um, quality assurance process 
a similar engineering, the same approach to open type features and so yeah, on. Yeah, which really over the time this developed. So don't don't think that back in 2006 we, we had this whole set figured out. It, it was a very much um, evolving process also by the fact that at some point we were fr going from two to 10 people, uh, which was a big jump. And um, having to deal with a group like that over different continents, it really forced us to change and to be more rigorous in the way um, we kind of um, have the design and the technical process set up. Mr. Yes, uh, yeah. just a, a point here. Basically, this is how we solved it. We're not saying this is the, the way to do it, but this is Brie Latin, right? It has support for Latin 144 languages, right? When you get Brie Cyrillic, you don't get only a Cyrillic, you need the Latin alongside because many times they are used uh, in, in the same paragraph. So the Latin that you get with the Cyrillic is the same Latin. It's not a stripped down Latin. And this is the, the kind of um, way that we manage uh, language support, trying to, to, to copy stuff over and to, to have the same, the same language support. Yeah. And um, we try to be, let's say, diverse within the library enough, within our, our scope, our focus, um, within this kind of editorial genre um, but uh, with enough boundaries, so kind of um, enough... Um, yeah, diversity, diversity, really. Yeah, diversity. So, so basically, these two fonts, you can say, sans serif will fit the bill for both of them, right? But uh, they look really, really different, and they can uh, serve different purposes, even within the editorial design area. So kind of pushing a little bit the boundaries of what the genre is. Um, and for us, being kind of reader and user-centered um, is important because we, we don't, you don't want to design or we don't design in, in a vacuum, yeah? So we need to know what's going on, what are actual needs for people. Um, and, and so we try to communicate, we try to talk to users, to, to um, people who use type, and find a way of responding to that. Also, I think that's the type designers, we really work for two clients. One of them is the graphic designer who is going to use the typeface, but the final client is the reader who has to actually um, receive the information. So when you start thinking about how these fonts are going to be used, you could stick to this bit and say, okay, this is wide enough. But then you get to see that this can be developed a lot more. I mean, it does not mean that then, you know, whatever you do really ends up in there. But uh, as a framework, it's important to have um, these, these corner points kind of set out before you set out to, to design. Just to make perfect clear, you can design a font that fits one of these boxes probably very well, let's say. You can only fill this box, but chances are that a tie face will fill many of these boxes, and you need to ch select which ones you want to target. Thank you. Yes, originality. As uh, Vig was pointing out before, um, we try not to repeat ourselves too much, and we try to look um, to do something that is novel, but it has a historical um, foundations. Yeah. Uh, so we will present this, um, these two projects. These are new, new things that are not released yet. So well, Catalpa will be next week. Will be next week with so. um, a lot of uh, faith. <laughs> <laughs> so you have a preview. Um, yes. Um, this is based on uh, the idea of um, good type, good type, and making things really big. Um, so we ended we up with um, four weights going from really bold to really, really bold. Okay? So really, 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 really bold. And this is from uh, hairline to sort of light. 
Because, <clears throat> I mean, this started really long time ago. We, we got inspired by, um, in Sweden, we were in Sweden, by these posters. Um, there were around some kind of newspaper posters with um, the, the accents being sort of punched into the outlines. And there was something about that style that we really liked. And, but then it got put in the, in the drawer and other stuff. And then, I don't know, a year ago or so, we finally got it out. Yes, usually your typeface is sleep in a drawer for, let's say, uh, two or three <laughs> years be oh, before seeing the daylight. Um, so this is Catalpa. And um, it's going to be, uh, let's say, a tri-family, tri a trilogy in a way. Um, with um, the, the third one is at such a sh such a l low level of uh, it, development that the we third one is a that. secret, so it's we don't secret. talk about that. <laughs> but uh, Belarius is another <clears throat> one part of this um, trilogy, where we had um, the initial kind of design space scope was much bigger. Um, it's um, the idea is to have a variable only font. And we wanted to have four axes at the beginning. Uh, had to kind of pedal back um, because of technical um, problems. Um, so we couldn't do the slant and back slant. You are not saying the story right. The story is that Vic said, I want to draw something with really big serifs. And look what happened. <laughs> this is what happened, right? So I said, Vic, this is too much. <laughs> this is really too much. So we ended up drawing a sans. Uh, say, OK, probably we should find something in between. Um, so we ended up doing something that would allow the user to actually select how long the serif has to be. And uh, with variable fonts, this is uh, not super easy, but it is easier yeah. than before. It's, um, no, I think we are, we are getting there. So this is Belarius. <clears throat> the, the other tricky bit in, in type design is the naming. <laughs> and <laughs> yeah, this, actually, the naming took longer than designing the typeface. So, um, <laughs> it, but it doesn't matter. That is in, a different in, story. In the end, uh, we took an executive decision you know, because we tried to do it democratically, and it just did not quite <laughs> work. There is no such thing as free democracy, <laughs> I told you. <laughs> So another kind of pillar um, for us is community support, education. Uh, we run quite a lot of workshops, um, give talks like here, um, and try to be really part, try to kind of give what we have learned um, to, to give that to, to the people. But not only that, um, well, not only by us, physically being there and, and teaching somewhere, but we, we have this whole blog where we try to um, write articles, yeah, I, entries. I, I think it is uh, good to point out that, uh, that probably everyone in our team does some level of teaching, even yeah. if it is a few lessons, a few classes per year, a few workshops or whatever, but everyone is involved in doing some educational uh, work. Yeah, so we, we think it's really important, and we also work with um, some universities, some, some classes. Uh, this was in France where um, we kind of allow them to use some of our typefaces um, for free. They, they create a project with that to have basically access to not just the Adobe Suite, but to have access to, to fresh um, and modern typefaces. And, and they, really they get fun. to keep them as well. And they get to keep them. I like this one here that was um, with Ivo Sons, where they created for a topic we, with the teacher, we came up with a topic that would be interesting for them, and uh, they, they were playing around, around that topic. <coughs> or we made um, a kind of a pop-up show in Tel Aviv for, for Noam, Noam Text, that's going to be in uh, New York in uh, November as well. And then uh, we have the Gerald Unger Scholarship, I mean, now renamed after Gerald. Uh, this is um, 
a process we started a few years ago of, um, trying to uh, support uh, at least one student per year. Um, we ended up publishing uh, already a few of them, and yeah. this is uh, the fourth year. This is the fifth year. The fifth year. We took one year out last year. And, um, um, and Florian, the winner, yeah, is here. Yeah, he's here somewhere. This is Nord. It's designed by uh, Juan Bruce, a guy from Chile. It's a typeface for uh, cartography. Yeah. It's a really nice pro project. And that is uh, Temerer uh, by Quentin. I can never pronounce his last name. Schmerber. Sure. Schmerber. That's why I cannot pronounce it. <laughs> um, he, he's French, though. Yes, but With not the last name. a very German, night. German name. <laughs> um, a lovely typeface and a lovely poster. Uh, these two pieces will be available. We're actually yes. printing yeah. this. We're actually printing these things. Um, and this is a video that uh, we made, uh, I mean, Cecilia Brarda in Santa Fe made for Belly. Um, Sound? That was the first, um, so Belly was the first kind of winner, Roxanne Gatto, who is now on our team. She's a really good, um, actually, graphic and type designer. French, young French girl. Um, both Belly and uh, Nord, they got the TDC award, yeah. which uh, really, for us, it was really nice because it meant that this idea of the scholarship and the mentorship was really, really working. So um, we're keeping on on that. And let's say our last kind of um, principle is good karma. So being a good person overall. Uh, uh, we believe that fair business is, is good business and it's important. Um, this, especially our kind of area of, of typography, is not about money as such. I mean, we are not uh, hedge fund managers or anything well, like well, that. Well, Vic is trying to say we're not rich. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But uh, we, we are also not screwing people, so that, that's more important. Um, we really kind of are proud of our customer support. Yeah? Um, it has been important to us from the start to be close to people, to um, respond to people if there are any problems. Um, and yeah, any problems or not. Because or sometimes or not, people yeah. would write us just to say, okay, um, can you recommend a typography pair or what I'm doing wrong here? Or why is this page not working? And uh, yeah. we are happy to to reply to So do you think this, this, is, this is fundamental, at least for, for us, um, is this a big, big part. And of course, fairness in general, and that means also crediting. Over the, the, the whole lecture, we, we kept on naming different people that collaborate with us, because uh, this is um, a collaborative effort that, um, that should be credited properly. Um, so we, uh, two years ago, mm -hmm. um, in Montreal, at in Montreal we presented at ATIPI, uh, we presented um, an idea which then became an article on a website of how crediting should be uh, standardized in the type business. Yeah, I mean, it's, 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 a, it's a proposal that we implemented in our own business and I would hope that other foundries would follow suit. To some, some extent, some of them they, they are, do. They are do. Um, But because really, it's an, it's important. We think it's important for um, for for the for the industry and in general, no, to to see who's behind such a big project because they are getting more and more uh, involved. It's it's not just usually not just one person anymore, especially if we talk about uh, multi-script designs, right? And so it's important for um, to really point out the people who helped create this project, this product, and and to honor the the work, yeah. Because basically, without them and and without it this collaboration, it would not work. It would work. be impossible. <clears throat> and we also um, so we have the series of meets the team, 
to really show you who's behind Type Together. Uh, again, because it is a collaborative effort and it's important for us to, to show these interesting people who have all sorts of stuff going on and who um, um, their kind of expertise becomes visible yeah? and therefore in a way it, it creates uh, also more value for, for the product, for the funds. It was this time we had to print eight t-shirts. Eight. Not 800, not 8,000, not 80, eight. <laughs> she went on a, on a search for two weeks. No, come on. <laughs> two weeks to find, uh, what, what was it? Uh, organic cotton mm -hmm. and... Um, well, fair trade. And fair trade <laughs> shirts. Uh, so, so those little details are important in some way. Yeah, it's important, I, I think. Um, but also, in, I mean, this, this also kind of relates to, in a way, our pricing strategy. So, of course, um, we do want to make a living. I mean, let's be honest. But um, we try to be fair enough in the pricing structure that we do so that it's affordable uh, in, in kind of in the pricing models. <clears throat> and, of course, have a generally, you know, positive attitude to life. Uh, I think that helped us a yeah, lot yeah. through various um, crises. And the, the last thing uh, we're going to show is um, our kind of engagement in non-profitable projects. In, in typography, there are many projects that are for huge companies. They are making a lot of money. And uh, those are very nice projects, uh, usually, and you get to work with very clever people. But those little projects that are on the side, the things for developing uh, orthographies or, or, or languages, uh, minority languages, those things are as important and someone should take care of them as well. Yeah, like, um, so this is uh, for a Canadian university, the Langara College in Vancouver. Um, they were using Adele um, for a while now as their kind of main brand font, let's say. And two years ago, they, they came to us asking, hey, could you do, uh, help us with designing this logo, which is set in Halkomilan, uh, which is the, the language of the, the Canadian minority um, First Nation. So actually, you know, the, the real Canadians. Um, and because Langara, the college, is built on a Musqueam um, nation's um, area. So they have this relationship with them. And um, this was really nice quote by Vanessa Campbell, who is from the Mosquem language office, who we worked very closely because after the logo, we, we also were asked to develop um, the whole alphabet for them, for, for the Halkomelan language, which really is only a handful of people. I mean, it's perhaps 500 people, max, who speak this language. <laughs> Yeah, but it's a very strong. Um, they they are developing a very strong heritage, very strong feeling uh, and pride. Uh, and this is um, so the extension here in in red, that little little L belt down there. That, that is a problem. That, that's <laughs> a really 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 tricky one to get right. We. Um, <laughs> It doesn't seem so, but I had a lot of exchanges with, with the linguists, uh, with Vanessa, no, make it a bit bigger, please make it a... And trying to explain also in a way at the same time uh, some design principles. Yeah. And uh, that's how it looks like in, in text on the left. <coughs> okay, and earlier we showed you um, Adele Sans and its extensions, but there is a part of the world that uh, really, in typographic terms, has almost no support, and that is um, Africa, the Latin part of Africa. Um, so we hired uh, Don Osborne, um, a consultant in, in the States, uh, just don't go, yeah, don't yeah. go too fast, um, in the States to actually try to compile what is the list of characters that we needed for all of the languages that use the Latin script. Um, 
and some of these orthographies are are still developing. There's still, there are still progress uh, going on there. So it took quite a while to get there, and um, we are about to release uh, an extension to the Latin Adele that has some funny things like uh, the open O, this character, this character, a lot of uh, Greek stuff you will see here, or, or Greek derivatives um, that will cover um, another 292 languages <coughs> in Africa. So we're very happy about the result. Um, it was a process that took three years, I would yeah. say, all in all. So because, um, sorry, um, it's again the whole, um, all of the styles. Yeah, so we are not doing just one, one style. Sorry, can I show something that I'm very proud of? Oh yeah, the <laughs> this is um, Dinka. Um, Dinka uses um, basically the vowels, right? And for the aspirated vowels, they use the diaresis mark. But then they have short vowels and long vowels. The short vowels, you put only one letter. For the long vowels, you put double letters, like here, right? Now, what happens when you have a double I with diaresis? You get a diaresis ligature. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you. That, that's, that was my bit. <laughs> So yes, yeah, so we went basically um, from 144 to 438 languages, and we decided to give this really um, for free to NGOs and to educational um, universities, you know, whoever wants to, to use that. I think we're done. Almost, yeah, we have our kind of summary, little summary slide. Um, so 47, only two minutes late, come on. <laughs> you have to be proud of us, mate. Um, thank you so much for your attention. Uh, it was really nice uh, to be here with you. Yes, thank you. Woo!